welcome back to Out of Spec. I'm Max, and I'm here, uh, the honor of being with Mike Norton. Um, hello. So yeah. you work with Ford in kind of motorsport, rally world, uh, and you have uh, been heavily involved in this project, as I understand, right? I have, yeah. So I do work at Ford Performance, uh, mm -hmm. and I look after all of our uh, rally and off-road yeah. programs, but also demonstrators, or at least Supervan, yeah. a demonstrator as well, yeah. There's the, it's going out. So um, for those who don't know, Supervan is kind of a long time thing at Ford. You guys have various iterations of it through the years. We've got, I guess, 4.1 behind us? We call it 4. 4, okay, Superman sorry. Superman 4, and it's Superman 4.2. 4.2, what we just saw go out right behind us right now. So uh, what is the idea with this, as I understand it, e-transit van, heavily modified. Um, what, was, what were the kind of the goals of this project? for racing up Pikes Peak. Uh, exactly that, race up Pikes Peak. I mean, yeah. the, goal, the goal was to beat the, um, yeah, the goal was to beat the Pikes Peak Open record. Yeah. Um, Electric you know, or just overall, like? No, no, well, it, the Pikes Peak Open is, yeah. a, is a class in itself, which yes. is open to um, vehicles that are representative of their, their uh, road car compatriots, let's say. Yep. So we fit into the Pikes Peak Open class. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we wanted to showcase what Transit's capable of. Yeah. Um, and then come and race here. You said Supervan's got a huge history with mm -hmm. Supervan 1, I think it was 1971, Supervan 2 in like 1984, Supervan 3 in 1994. Yeah. And then we finally got to Supervan 4 in, you know, last year, which went to Goodwood. Mm -hmm. After that, you know, we thought, well, what can we do next? So we made what was a pretty awesome vehicle, more awesome. Yeah. Shed lots of weight, nearly, uh, near, almost 400 kilograms removed. Um, you know, the, our partners at Stard uh, developed the the powertrain system. Yeah. You know, so it's let, Supervan 4's got four motors. Uh, Supervan 4.2's got three motors. Yeah. But that's all about optimizing the, you know, the energy we have, uh, mm -hmm. getting the weight as low as we can, and yeah. what can be used when you got such a tricky course as Pikes Peak. Right. So it's still by two motors in the rear. I understand one now in the front. Correct. That's helped with a lot of the weight. I guess there's been some aerodynamic changes too. Yeah, you've only got to look at the two vehicles. So yeah. uh, to, to run at Pikes Peak, which is pretty high altitude, mm -hmm. starts at you know 9,000 something feet, ends at 14,000, I think 700 feet. Yeah. Um, that's you know that, that makes the air quite thin, and in order to make the vehicle operate you know quickly uh, and get the, the you know the driver to drive it. Yeah. really really fast yeah he needs that downforce and the only way right. you get that is by huge aerodynamic aids right you know so it's got a huge front split up big rear wing uh, there's lots of ducting underneath that you perhaps can't see immediately yeah um, and our cfd you know the aerodynamics team at full performance and all the you know uh, all the cfd modeling they did um, got us to where we are they supply all that kind of information to the styling and studio guys yep and you end up with Supervan 4.2. The profile is gorgeous looking, and more importantly, I'm sure the downforce benefits are there. Uh, the question is, you know, for our audience, we cover electric vehicles from the perspective of the consumer, the efficiency, the torque delivery, oh, it makes it fun on the road, all that stuff. From a performance point of view, what are some of the challenges and what are some of the benefits of working with, you know, an electric powertrain for racing up Pikes Peak? Um, well, Right, so electric powertrain clearly has one huge advantage when you're climbing a mountain. Yeah. And that's the fact that you have no offset with, as the air gets thinner, you're not reducing your, your motor's performance. Mm -hmm. So that's a big advantage we do have. Um, and really, you know, we know that uh, electrification and, and educating the consumers, you know, we want to show what electric vehicles are capable of. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, we want to do it with something that's different. So yeah. we're doing it with transit and it's, you know, it, it's an eye opener. People yeah. are astounded when they see it. They are, yeah. They're astounded when they see it move. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so Ford sells an e-transit now. Well, obviously, this is heavily derivated uh, from the commercial sector. But in terms of, you know, some of the really advanced technologies that are applying to this, do you see some of that coming into consumer vehicles in the future? The answer is it has to be yes. I mean, uh, you know, it, there, there is a there is a difference because what we want from a from a battery cell yeah. in racing yeah. compared to what production cars would want for the consumer are almost, if not polar opposite. Uh -huh. 
but that said, there's still a lot of learning that we can get from doing projects like right. this, whether it would be, you know, strategies, protocols, um, you know, just some of the, the nuances of setting up the powertrain, um, you know, the, the regenerative braking, all of that tuning, you know, we do it, you know, our guys are fabulous, all of our road car engineers that do this as a day-to-day, -day, you know, day-to-day -day business, but we, we can bring a different dynamic in a different way because we're doing it, you know, at different speeds, at mm -hmm. different altitudes, and therefore, you know, we end up with a, a different perspective from what you might ordin ordinarily get from a road car program. So Ford is emphasizing electric vehicles a lot right now, both in the consumer, the commercial space, now in motorsport as well. Uh, looking towards that, you know, a consumer's priority is something towards the effect of, oh, I want range, I want charging, all of this. And for you, it's about speed, it's about downforce, aerodynamics. You mentioned the regen system, and I did read that that has actually been tweaked a little. Um, so regenerative braking for what is essentially a hill climb event with very acute grades, how is that factoring in here? Uh, well, uh, quite a lot. I mean, the, the more you can regenerate, the more energy you can put back in the battery, which yeah. gives you more to use going up the hill. You know, so we've, we've modeled, uh, I'll say that, start of model the powertrain, the battery system yeah. to get the optimum, to get us from the bottom to the top in the fastest time. Right. So, you know, with a, the battery we have, if, if we can put more energy back into the battery, we have more to use as we go up the hill. Right. So, but not only that, you know, it's, we have to remember this is still a transit van. It's a big vehicle. Yeah. You know, it, it, compared to many of the cars you'll see go up the mountain on Sunday, it's heavy compared to those vehicles. It's rocking, what, a 50 kilowatt hour pack? 50 kilowatt hour battery, yes. Yeah. So, you know, the more energy we can put back into that mm -hmm. um, with the regenerative braking, the more yeah. we can use going up the mountain. Yeah. And so what is that reading? Was it like 600 kilowatts instantaneously? Uh, th that's how much current basically, or how much power can be delivered back? 600 kilowatts, exactly that. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. I well, mean, it is, and so yeah. but, that, but that helps so because we've got like I say, it, it's a it's a big yeah. it's a big vehicle. That also, you know, that means we can we can have I won't say lighter brakes, but we can because we can regenerate so so strongly. Mm -hmm. You know, that helps with the brake package. It you don't have to oversize the rotors and the friction. Groups. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So very exciting in that sense. Uh, so just reflecting on this week where we're gonna, going forward, uh, the performances have been spectacular. I mean, just this morning, uh, I think you guys set. Um, you know, a record. I would anticipate, let's just say, one of the biggest challenges for an event like this with the weather and everything being thermals, especially for any car. Like you mentioned, uh, combustion cars struggle to breathe at altitude. Electric cars don't have that problem. But besides the mass, you've got this big battery. You've got three juicy motors to cool. Um, what's the challenge or what's the situation look like with the thermals of this project? Yeah, well, from that regard, you know, the cooling aspect is pretty similar to a combustion engine, yeah. you know, the, the air's, you know, for our aerodynamics to work, mm -hmm. for their aerodynamics to work, it's the same. To cool yeah. the brakes, you know, to cool the 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 the, the mo or the, the systems that cool the motors yeah. uh, and the battery. From that point of view, we have to be just as diligent on our cooling pack mm -hmm. as you would with a combustion engine. Okay. But you know, so that challenge exists for the for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Just the advantage we have is when we when we go when we go up in altitude, our performance in terms of power output doesn't right. change. Right, same power, but you have the same thermal issues. So uh, just on the learnings of the week, uh, what are you kind of refining? What's happening this week, you know, here in HQ where we are uh, towards, you know, nailing this performance? Uh, it's mainly about just tuning the vehicle. You know, we, we had a great basis to start with Supervan 4. Yeah. Supervan 4.2 is an evolution of that. Yeah. But an evolution to then go and run at somewhere as specialized as Pikes Peak. Mm -hmm that that's not an easy thing to to achieve yeah you know quickly yeah you only get you are very very limited with the amount of running you can do at pike's peak right um you know if you if you built a circuit car you could go to a circuit you could do 50 150 laps yeah. and you 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 could tune it every 10 laps and you could be there you know forever mm -hmm. we know the time on the mountain is very limited yeah. we start you know you can first run essentially sunrise uh -huh. um, and on some of the test days you have to be off the mountain by half past seven mm -hmm. some you have you know the road closes at half past eight so yeah. you have a, like a three hour window uh, or a two hour window depending on the test schedule um, and you're sharing that with all the other competitors yeah. so you know our first day at the top of the mountain 
we had two runs. So to try and tune this vehicle that's this complicated with just two runs of one sector, you know, so that's why we're here. We're just trying to, we're tuning some of the steering systems. We're just doing, just getting the feeling of some back to back with whether it's rake or ride height or roll bars, springs, you know, the, the correlation between the mountain and the track here are very different. Yep. But it gives the driver a, at least a sense of understanding of where, what the changes might do mm -hmm. going to the mountain. You know, Roman is hugely experienced. Yeah. Um, he's the man you would want doing the job. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are learnings we can get done here that we can then take to the mountain tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, it's all very exciting. And while this is, you know, the latest, greatest, the one behind us, as I understand it, right, more power, more motor, all of these different iterations of the project are optimized for different things. Like you mentioned, this has all been about this challenge. So not to speculate too much, but I'm sure we'll see Super Van turn its face up in uh, future uh, motorsport events in some form or another. Oh, uh, sure. I yeah. mean, Super Van 4 is a road legal 2000, you know, if you like, horsepower van. Yeah. You know, you'll see that out and about. And, you know, we haven't decided, but we, you know, we haven't built Super Van 4 just to do one job. So right. you'll definitely see it. Well, just like in the commercial sector, transit's used for a lot of use cases. This heavily modified project is also being put through all different kinds of ringers. So it's an honor to speak with you. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you, indeed. Great. Thank you very much.